All right, we're going to talk about, you know, the upper register, how to build the upper register. Um, this is like everybody wants to know about this stuff. Um, just for a little background, when I came up, really up until the time I got out of college, I really was focusing on being a jazz player. And right when I got out of college, I got the gig with Blood, Sweat and Tears. And the guy that was supposed to play lead decided not to do it because he got the gig with Sinatra. So they asked me to move up and play lead. And all of a sudden I'm like, huh? You know, I mean, I didn't have any chops to do this. So I pestered John Faddis for a long time and got some lessons from him. And I had been studying with Carmine Caruso and, and, and trying to just formulate how to go about getting this register happening. because. High notes for a lead player, it's a different scenario than high notes as far as blowing. Because if I'm blowing, I can decide to play in the upper register or I can decide not to. And I can also decide how I want to get up there and how I want to get back down. But if you're playing lead, you basically have to do what the music says. And most of the time, you're going to have to play high where it's the least convenient time for you to do so. At the end of a tune when you're tired or you have to play a shout chorus and at the end you have to play a high note and the leader of the band's not a trumpet player, he's a piano player so he has no idea that you have to hold your breath and he's doing this and you're dying and all this kind of stuff that lead players suffer through. So the thing about playing high notes and it ties into the previous thing that I talked about with warming up is that if your lips are not familiar with where those notes are then you can blow your brains out and the note is not going to come out. So your, your lips have to know where those notes are. And you also physiologically have to prepare yourself in a real systematic way to not only being able to play up there, but being able to stay up there and maintain strength. In that way, it's not dissimilar to the way people use strength training exercises. Because what happens is, is you put 100 pounds on the barbell and you do bench presses and you get to number eight and all of a sudden, you know, you're shaking like this and you can barely get it out. Well, that's like you can play up to high C and then you go to a D and it's kind of coming out and then you get to an E and it's barely coming out. That E barely coming out is the same thing as the guy with the barbell on the ninth time and he's shaking. But he does it, then he rests, maybe a day or something, then he goes back again. Well, now eight. 9 is easy, 10 is even easy, so what does he have to do? He has to put a little more weight on, and now he's shaking again. Same thing with playing high. You get up to the D, you get to the E, you're shaking on the E, it's just barely coming out. Okay, you stop there, you go back again, the E's now coming, now you go to the F and you move it up systematically. What John Faddis gave me to do is real simple, it's just triads. It's just a half note on the root, a half note on the third, and a whole note on the fifth and you're just going up chromatically and you're crescendoing through. So and then I stop and he would have me play a low G. Now I'm remembering that feel of that low G now. I'm going up a half step. Et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to kind of skip up a little way so I don't like bore these guys with going up by half steps. So now I'm up to like G. Notice every time I'm going back to that low G, I'm doing a breath start on the low G. I'm not tonguing the low G because what that's going to do is bring the aperture back into focus again. I want to have this aperture always in focus so when I go into the upper register, my lips aren't spread all apart. If my lips are spread apart, what's going to happen is I'm going to go and it's air is going to come out. No sound's going to come out.
Now what'll start to happen is that low G is going to start sounding a little ratty the more I start going into the extreme upper register. So what I may do is I may want to play that low G a few times and, and get the feeling of the sound being centered again. And then you just keep going up by half steps. Now when you get to the point where you can't go any higher, stop there. Just stop there. And then you're done for the day. Then do some pedal tones or something or some Clark 1 to loosen things back up again. And that's it. Leave it alone. It's just like lifting weights or doing push-ups. You do as many as you can do. When you get to the point where you're shaking, you try and finish that one. Maybe go for another one. Oh, I can't get it. You fall on your face. You're done for the day. Then rest. And then systematically, little by little, increase the, the amount of range that you can get. Now, the important thing is this, and you noticed maybe on the last one that I did, when I got to the high E flat, I put a little vibrato on it. The reason why I like to do that is because I want to always try and make these things musical, especially in the upper register. Unfortunately, there's a real tendency for it to turn into like just gladiator trumpet where musicality just goes out the window. If you listen to the great lead trumpet players, if you listen to Snooky Young, if you listen to Conrad Gazzo, Al Porcino, Buddy Childers, Yuan Racy, the list goes on and on. If you listen to the great ones, Bob Milliken, the, thing, the one thing that they all have in common is that when they're playing up there, it's swinging and it's beautiful. And that's what you want. Lead trumpet means that you're leading the band, leading the band in terms of time feel, in terms of phrasing, in terms of sound concept. Yes, you do have to play high notes, but just high notes without all that other stuff, you're not going to get hired for the gigs. The guy that has the high notes that also has all those other things, those are the guys that are busy, and those are the guys you should want to emulate.